Pretty Little Liars Original Sin is back to keep you up all night. The YA thriller has been transformed into a full-fledged slasher series, with the criminal mastermind terrorizing everyone. But did you catch any similarities to the original show? Stick around and we'll reveal all there is to Pretty Little Liars The Original Sin, and every Easter egg you might have missed. First up, A is back, tell a friend. Pretty Little Liars Original Sin wouldn't be a PLL spinoff without the infamous a, the main antagonist who harassed the liars in the original show by threatening to reveal their most intimate secrets. The OG believed A was their former friend, Alison De Laurentiis, played by Sasha Peters, who had mysteriously vanished one day. After discovering Ali's body, they realize A must be someone worse. The villain's signature is always A, short for Ali, and sometimes depicted in bright red. A's true identity isn't always clear throughout PLL, but the code name sticks. Text, notes, and even the first murder of Imogen's mother, Davy, are now all signed with an A in PLL Original Sin, giving the new liars their first clue as to who their tormentor could be. A does not appear physically in the original Pretty Little Liars until later in the series. Still, the first three episodes of Original Sin establish A as a tall, brooding, masked villain from the start. Another way the symbol is used in Original Sin is in transition graphics, highlighting the passage of time and featuring every letter A in red. Don't go anywhere because things are about to get juicier. Now, we're again in the claws of A's hands. Or instead, let's hope our girls can escape this villainy without much damage. Next, we're loving the whole rustic 1950s aesthetic. It seems like Pennsylvania will always welcome rich girls and schemesters, but the creators of PLL OS are definitely going somewhere with the whole chilling adventures of Sabrina and Riverdale aesthetic this time. Rosewood, a small, unremarkable white-collar town in Pennsylvania, is the setting for the original Pretty Little Liars. Pretty Little Liars' original sin takes place in Millwood, Pennsylvania, another working-class town. Fans of the franchise quickly discover that Ravenswood, the first PLL spinoff, is also set in Pennsylvania. If you've seen Riverdale or Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, you'll understand where PLL OS is going visually. Millwood is a stark contrast to Rosewood in the original series. Whereas Rosewood was a prosperous neighborhood, Millwood was inspired by Rust Belt towns that peaked in the 1950s, before falling into disrepair over time. Given that the murderer is only more hellbent this time, a gothic and rustic feel seems to be precisely what the show needs. PLL OS has one specific decade anchor point, the late 90s when the liar's parents were kids and teenagers. These two epics are intertwined. Imogen's key pieces, such as a washed denim notebook, could have come from her mother's attic. The school's props feel even older, dingy yet classic brown desk in an outdated, chunky tech library. Everything, even the stickers on their laptops, serves a purpose. Now, what significance does Radley Sanitarium hold this time? Here's another Easter egg in the PLL OS you might have missed. In terms of Pennsylvania, episode 6 demonstrated how close Millwood and Rosewood are. Anyone who has seen the freeform drama Radley Sanitarium will recall it as a hot spot for some of the town's biggest mysteries and secrets. Radley was at the center of many of the overarching plot lines and secrets. Is this also true of Original Sin? Imogen and Tabby's investigation into Angela's past leads them to Radley Sanitarium, which will be familiar to anyone who has seen the original Pretty Little Liars. So what brings our Millwood Liars to the town where it all began? The girls discover that Angela's mother, Rose, had a mental breakdown after Angela Angela died. Following that, she was committed to Radley Sanitarium in the neighboring town of Rosewood. Mona is sent to Radley Sanitarium after being revealed as A in season 2 of PLL. By the end of the show's seven-season run, the sanitarium had been closed and converted into a hotel. Imogen and Tabby go to the hotel to learn more about Rose and Angela, so we'd advise you to take out your pens and books and map all these connections to get to the bottom of A's identity. 
Also, if the intro music was nostalgic and haunting, we know why. The haunting opening lyrics of Secret by the Pierces in the Pretty Little Liars original Sin intro are instantly recognized by most OG fans. The song, set to a methodical accordion melody, humorously describes how some secrets are better left unsaid, cause two can keep a secret if one of them is dead. The title song is remixed to sound even scarier. Not only does it pay homage to its predecessors, but it also paves a path for what's in store. Did you catch the Easter egg early on too? All seven seasons of Pretty Little Liars began with the chilling theme song, so it stands to reason that Original Sin starts with a new, remixed version. The haunting tune that plays during the opening credits of the original PLL while Emily, Aria, Spencer, and Hannah stand in front of their friend Allison's coffin is back. The genuinely memorable lyrics of Got a Secret, Can You Keep It? are heard while we watch the frightening A, destroy photos of our new liars. Secret is one of the most iconic teen TV theme songs, and bringing it back successfully may inspire other shows to do the same. But we can't blame you if you felt like busting a move when hearing the track. We love it too! Up next, Wes and Tabby's relationship reminds us of Arya and Ezra. One of the significant relationships that rise and fall throughout Pretty Little Liars are between Arya Montgomery and Ezra Fitzpatrick. They meet and kiss in a Rosewood bar, only to discover that Ezra is Arya's high school English teacher. The pair embark on a forbidden romance that lasts the entire run of the show, with A constantly lurking in the wings, threatening to reveal their secret. In Tabby and Wes, Original Sin offers a more realistic and decidedly creepier take on Arya and Ezra's relationship. Wes has been pretty blatant about how mature he is compared to Tabby. He applauds her for her sensible movie decisions, dangles his prestigious NYU film professor connections over her head, and constantly finds reasons for her to stay late. It remains to be seen whether their relationship develops into anything romantic, but given that the original PLL was frequently rebuked for romanticizing a student-teacher relationship, Tabby and Wes's relationship appears to be an original sin attempt at correct that flawed storyline. Come on guys, don't tell us you ship Tabby and Wes already. If you're looking for a bit of a ludicrous relationship, maybe Netflix's romantic movie selections can offer you something that'll satisfy you for 365 days. But wait, do our favorite fictional universes have a thing for twins? Do twins imply twice the trouble? The writers of Pretty Little Liars and Pretty Little Liars Original Sin certainly seem to believe so. The main characters in the new show and the original book series are a pair of blonde twin sisters. Karen Beasley, Mallory Betchel, is quick established as the high school mean girl, who bullies Imogen, Tavi, Farron, Noah, and Mouse for various reasons in Original Sin. Viewers also learn that Karen's identical twin, Kelly, also played by Betchel, has a complicated relationship with her sister. This relationship isn't fully explained or developed before Karen is murdered by A at the end of episode 2. Fans of Pretty Little Liars will recall that when the original Liars believe Allie is dead, it turns out to be the body of Allie's twin sister, Courtney De Laurentiis. Allie is still alive, complicating A and Allie's backstory. The presence of twins in the spinoff closely resembles the original show, and because Kelly and Karen switch places early in Original Sin, it begs the question of which twin died and which one is now choosing to assist the liars in getting out of trouble and solving the mystery of who A is. We feel sorry for all our fans who are twins. You guys aren't bad omens, we swear. Lastly, PLLOS is sprinkled with brilliant homages to the creator's favorite horror movies. Although this isn't a Pretty Little Liars Easter egg, almost everyone will recognize the numerous references to classic horror films scattered throughout Original Sin. From the bucket of red paint in the school dance rafters to the small text Tabby receives from A quoting a line from 1996's Scream, you can barely count the visual and verbal references on one hand. Furthermore, much of Tabby's dialogue establishes her as a horror movie fan, who not only makes quick-witted movie references but also aspires to attend prestigious film schools. Aguirre Sacasa spoke to TV Line about their intentional homages to classic horror films. He mentioned that Lindsay and his colleague were obsessed with the original show, but given they chose to revamp the series as a darker version, it was only fitting they featured their 
other cult classics in the show. These are the only connections we've discovered so far, but there will undoubtedly be more as new episodes of Pretty Little Liars Original Sin air on HBO Max this summer. According to Aguirre Sacasa, once you reach episode 6, the Easter eggs don't stop. That's all, folks. Pretty Little Liars Original Sin is binge-worthy and definitely our new favorite obsession. As dedicated fans, we're sure you've picked up on more Easter eggs and clues that will have you guessing A's identity even quicker. Hit subscribe to our channel so you can follow more delicious content.